I, I've, I've been tasked with really discussing working class and mass organizing, but I thought it might be helpful to look at the question through the lens of the centennial of the Bolshevik Revolution and the anniversary of the assassination of Che Guevara. In the case of the Bolshevik Revolution, it is hardly possible to discuss it without referring to Lenin's leadership. I think a large number of the comrades and friends are familiar with Lenin's theoretical contributions on imperialism and the national question, even if they haven't had a chance to study them. What has to be understood is that the theoretical works produced by Lenin were written in the heat of battle, even in exile. There was nothing professorial about them. Lenin wrote as a means to intervene in the struggle, regardless of its stage or development. On the other hand, there is less discussion of Lenin's role as the organizer of the Bolshevik party. Everyone knows he was its proponent and architect, but he was also its organizer, rolling up his sleeves, working in the trenches, encouraging and building cadre, and when needed, even arguing with his own party. But it is this next aspect of Lenin which characterizes the Bolshevik party as a whole that is important for this report. Lenin paid immense attention to and developed an unparalleled understanding of the working class and the peasants of Tsarist Russia. This could not have happened if the Bolsheviks were not deeply engaged in the struggle of the masses and had not recruited workers into the ranks of the party. Kripskaya, his companion, who was a revolutionary and leader in her own right, wrote about how feverishly Lenin, even in exile, followed every detail of what was happening in the working class struggle. It literally made him sick if he wasn't able to get the needed news and feedback from those who were in the front lines inside of Russia. All of this preceded and prepared the ground for the great October Revolution. Without this work, a great revolutionary development might have been missed or delayed. And what was the rallying call and demands of the Bolshevik Revolution? I remember Comrade Taran mentioned it this morning, bread, land, and peace. The Russian bourgeoisie of 1905 had neither the will nor the ability as defenders of private property to fulfill these rather straightforward demands. The poor and working class were hungry and starving. The, the peasants despised the landlords and the soldiers who came from the working class and the peasants who were used as cannon fodder in the imperialist war were weary, exhausted, and ready to turn the guns around. The workers in the cities wanted power. The truth is that revolutions, uprisings, and insurrections are perhaps the most democratic expression of the will of the mass of the people. As Marxists, we recognize this. And they're certainly more democratic than the elections that Comrade Larry referred to earlier. Time is short, but I wanted to say something about Che Guevara. I think everyone is familiar with Che's poignant story of how he and his troops were forced to kill their beloved puppy to keep the enemy from detecting them. But there is another story that we should familiar, familiarize ourselves with, and this is how Commandante Che insisted on not only teaching political theory to the peasants and workers in the mountains of Cuba, but also requiring literacy as a prerequisite for participating in the guerrilla war. He had total confidence in the poorest of poor in Cuba. I wanted to recount this story to reflect a little on the Che quote that is referenced many times, that revolutionaries are guided by great feelings of love. I, I'm positive that the love that Che refers to is not the ridiculous Hallmark card version of love, but rather the deeper sentiment of concern, service, and care which involves action and sacrifice. The kind of action that Che and his comrades took in teaching the peasants in the guerrilla war army. I'm convinced that this work was not without its huge frustrations. Many of those who deeply hated the Batista, Batista regime came into the struggle 
with backward ideas, including anti-communism. There were a lot of rumors, and not the good kind, that Che was a evil, rotten communist. And they came with the prejudices that are the stamp of the old society. Love is not always about not being angry or not struggling, but it is about persevering, hanging in there, and not giving up. In this case, not giving up on the broad working class, regardless of all its characteristics, and even more importantly, not giving up on each other. Our party has an amazing history itself, guided by our founding leaders, Sam Marcy, Vince Copeland, Dorothy Balin, and others. Sam continuously insisted that the party turn its face to the workers and that it had to particularly recruit and defend the oppressed communities. The All People's Congress, which was convened on October 18, 1981, in response to the crisis of Reaganism, was the conception of Marcy, and was a characteristic of many of Sam's tactics and strategy. The APC was distinguished in that it was developed to enable the working class and the poor to intervene in the particular crisis that existed during the period. It was not static. It was conceived to become an instrument of power for the workers who were beginning to suffer an avalanche of attacks during the Reagan election. Its 2,000 plus delegates who convened the Congress, called for days of resistance, and called for assemblies everywhere. In short, in a very modest way, it borrowed its conceptions from the early Soviets. I wanted to end with two urgent appeals. One is immediate. It is really a continuation of the political discussion at a recent plenum on the crisis of the Trump regime and the Democratic Party and the dangers for the working class. I don't have time to go through all the important machinations, and I'm glad that Larry went through a lot more. And it's a given that if an imperialist war breaks out against the DPRK or anywhere else in the world, that all of our attention would have to be immediately refocused. But comrades, here is the danger. If the bourgeois state takes Trump out, and the mass of people, both young and old, are left out of the equation, it will benefit the far right and the fascists. We, we cannot allow the fight against Trump to be co-opted by the Democratic Party. Instead of the sickening, mind-numbing right, or the FBI, Instead of the sickening, mind-numbing attacks on Russia, which have done nothing but sideline the masses, the fight must be against white supremacy, against the wave of anti-immigrant attacks, about health care, about women, LGBTQ, and trans rights, and about the general misery and state of affairs for the working class in this country. The fight should be to turn the lights back on in Puerto Rico. The, my second appeal is this, and I feel this deeply. There is a capitalist economic crisis that is brewing that will most undoubtedly be deeper and more profound than the crisis in 2007. We have no crystal ball about when that will come, but it will come. We need to prepare ourselves. The worst thing I believe we could do is look at the current situation I'm talking about the present state of the broad working class movement and not step back and see how temporary the present situation is and understand how quickly and deeply things could turn in a direction that is favorable for revolutionary socialists. We need to double our efforts to recruit workers and the oppressed and at the same time participate in each and every struggle that we are capable of so that we can learn and prepare and look for every possible avenue to direct the working class struggle against capitalism and towards the fight for revolutionary socialism. We must take a page from the Bolsheviks on this. In turning ourselves towards these tasks, towards building our party and to the working class, which is now global in character, we have to exhibit the same ethical practice and optimistic confidence 
that both Commandante Che and Fidel had for the people. Build Workers World Party, fight for socialism, workers of the oppressed of the world unite.